Okay, so thank you so much, everyone. I hope everyone is coming back from the break. So the next and last talk for today is, is going to be focused on elevated quantum computing or logistic uh, transport utilization. We have here both uh, Raul Palacios and Juan Arillo. So Raul is a senior executive. He has extensive experience in the global IT industry and he has over a 20 year uh, plus career experience. He's been managing IT and cloud uh, complexity, uh, complex projects and technology integration uh, in America, UK, Europe, and Asia. And he mainly focuses on strategy development and, and delivery for large uh, cloud developments and, and for large enterprises and, and organizations. As part from that, we also have here Juan. Juan is a software engineer. He specializes in bucket development and, and in multiple technologies. And he has a background both in classical and quantum computing, and mainly focusing on decision and optimization problems. He's from a, the Universidad Politecnica de Valencia, but also has a, a computing specialization in Bachelor of Science and, and a Master uh, Hours in quantum computing. So it's great to have you both here. Thank you so much for, for agreeing to, to deliver this talk. And I hope that you all enjoy it. All yours. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone, depending on where you are joining us from today. It's an honor for us to, to introduce our master thesis research and results. Our work is titled Adiabatic Quantum Computing for Logistic Transport Optimization. And in the following slides and minutes, you will jump straight into what's the industry and business context. Uh, what solution alternatives we consider for the problem we are analyzing, the challenges and constraints we face during the process and how our findings pave the way for future benefits in the development of the technology and applications in a more realistic scenarios. One important aspect of our work is that we started our research using quantum simulators and later we were able to get financial support and to test our work with real quantum hardware using D-Wave leaders through a WS bracket cloud service. We were able to test our presumptions and fine tune based on our actual hardware constraint. But first, let me start from the beginning. We are going from general to specifics, from business context, delving deep into the details of the proposed solution and related research. So um, the current world trade is based on and supported by a strong and healthy supply chain where logistics plays a key role in producing and providing key assets and goods to keep societies and economies going. Since the globalization phenomenon is not turning back, the challenges in the global supply chain have grown in size and complexity in all different stages of the distribution of goods and assets from their source towards the final destination. In the new ways of doing business, um, the coupling the value chain components has become a tool to provide agility, scalability, and gains in the specialization of every specific step in the process. This approach is at the heart of what is currently known as the digital transformation, and the implications of digitalization are an increase in the use of high volumes of data and high demands of computations in many fields. The increased need for high computation has created traction for quantum computing to become a candidate to impact several industries where highly complex problems are worth the investment. There are several industries candidates to benefit from the potential to unlock value from quantum computing and their use. Transport optimization is one of the most important ones with a wide range of applicability in logistics. It can cover from, among others, the following possible scenarios logistic, material flow, assembly, retail store, waste management, public transportation, traffic routing, airlines, etc. In a recent study from Boston called Sample Group, the market size estimates for transport optimization value creation of mature technology ranges from 50 to 100 billion US dollars. In line with the insights from the Kinsey on the high potential scenario for optimization in logistics. So, based on the extensive array of technologies and solutions that are currently in use in the logistic industry, like those used for inventory management, cargo, or even ERPs, we narrowed our focus for the last mile delivery for its immediate match to the TSP VRP problem. The last mile 
challenge is primarily focused on the logistic and retail context. And it's a very important aspect for the whole supply chain industry. The supply chain is a network of elements transforming raw materials into final goods and assets and being transferred from one node to the other network, to the other node of the network, to uh, another transportation mechanisms. This supply chain is usually split into three main phases. The first mile, where the base materials are basically supplied and processed, the middle mile, where the main transit occurs between the suppliers and the requesters, and the last mile, where the finished goods and assets are distributed to its destination to the requester or customer. Thus, the goal of the last mile delivery is to transport an item to its recipient in the quickest and most efficient way possible. There are many elements involved in the last mile delivery process that customers are looking for. Speed, accuracy, time, efficiency, and precision of the product deliveries after reaching their endpoint, just to name a few. The, the boom of e-commerce propelled by the list of latest geopolitical and sanitary challenges has created an exponential growth and has also change the demands for better solutions from customers, pushing businesses to seek better solutions as a way to respond in social demands and new economic goals. During our research, we had a chance to interview one of the largest retailers in Latin America, and during the process, they revealed to us how they are arranging, how they are arranging their research teams into two main streams, data demanding problems and compute demanding problems and how they are creating instances to support innovation and entrepreneurship in this area. As with many other businesses, there is currently a lot of investment on the data side, which means there's also a huge opportunity in the computing side of the business challenge. With this in mind, the way we face the business analysis is based on understanding the size of the market and making basic estimates and assumptions that will lead us to assess a preliminary understanding on the potential of the business effort. In this case, mainly the return of investment. So based on the information from the National Commission for Market and Competency for a market of $20, $27 billion in Spain, with an average of 10% margin, where the last mile may represent something between 30 to 40% of the total cost and uh, a compound annual growth right close to something around like 16 percent we aim for a 50 billion market splitting gun granular small to micro enterprise sector which is reported to be close to something around like 2,000 small companies and one percent savings in optimization can be worth a very competitive return as you can see the numbers presented here are our initial estimates considerable considering an initial frugal investment, estimate on something around like 5 million US dollars in order to tackle a potential return on saving above 8 million dollars, which proves quite a positive return on investment scenario. Our final thoughts. We challenge our business scenario, even though more austere and extended estimation. We still have a positive investment outlook in a longer run, ranging between 30 to 40 percent. We may discuss further at the end. The most important conclusion from this business analysis is indeed the large business potential in the context of developing optimization in transport. Having this in mind, we consider researching further into the feasibility of facing one of the most famous transportation problems, the vehicle routing problem, or BRP. Without going further in the context, we decided to evaluate the vehicle routing problem due to its potential in business applicability. The VRP problem raised in the early 60s uh, is a generalization of the also famous traveling salesman problem, TSP, dating back to the 30s. Uh, being a hard non-polynomial problem, it is recurrently referenced as an optimization challenge, which nowadays is been solved by heuristic approach due to its complexity and a huge amount of variables and constraints. Uh, the problem has many variants, so we focus our work into the specific of the capacitated BRP. In our research, the constraints we selected to make the evaluations are uh, one single input, a fleet with homogeneous capacity, 
So we focus on the road improvements rather than the allocation of the capacity of the vehicle itself and uh, close the route, which means that all the routes end at the depot. Uh, since the emergence of quadratic unconstrained binary optimization, Cubo, originally proposed as a meta heuristic model for solving combinatorial optimization, it has become a reference tool for combinatorial optimization problems. This approach moves us from the combinatorial problem towards the formulations, towards the use of quantum annealing to devise an approximate solution. And this is what we analyze in the following slides. Then you can go along with my dear friend Juan. Thank you, Raul. To solve the aforementioned vehicle routing problem, we have considered first two approaches. For the first approach, we develop a hybrid algorithm which splits the problem into two distinct phases. And then for each of these two phases, we developed both a quantum and a classical algorithm. The second approach we developed consists of a fully quantum algorithm, which attempts to solve the problem as a whole. This we have named the Cubo CVRP algorithm. The proposed hybrid algorithm divides the vehicle routing problem into two distinct problems. First, we use a clustering algorithm to divide the data into separate clusters, and then we solve the traveling salesman problem on each of the generated clusters. This is known as a cluster first, route second approach. One of the main advantages of this approach is the fact that after clustering, we can run the, multi the multiple traveling salesman problems in parallel. This greatly reduces the computation time needed to obtain a solution versus running all the TSP instances sequentially. Another great advantage is that by splitting the VRP problem into clustering and routing problems, the solution space for each of the resulting sub-problems sub is much smaller than the solution space for the VRP problem as a whole. This ultimately allows us to search through it more exhaustively and return a better solution in a shorter time period. For the clustering phase, we have developed both a classical and a quantum algorithm. The classical algorithm is a modified version of the K-Metoids algorithm, which takes into account the total demand inside each cluster. Basically, the K-Metoids algorithm clusters the data into a specified number of clusters by choosing X random data points as the metoids. In our case, instead of choosing them randomly, we chose the data points with the highest demand. Then it computes the distance between every point and the metoids and assigns each point to their closest metoid. We also add a penalty for each cluster where the total demand inside the cluster surpasses the vehicle capacity. Then for every metoid and for every data point, the ChemMetoids algorithm swaps the metoid and the data point and recomputes the clusters. If the solution obtained is worse than the previous one, we undo the swap. Otherwise, we, we keep swapping points and recomputing clusters until either the limit of iterations is reached or, or until we cannot obtain better results by swapping points. The search performed by this algorithm is a greedy search since it is unable to accept worse solutions than the current one. This typically causes the algorithm to get stuck on local optima instead of finding the global optima. The quantum algorithm is a cubal formulation of the constrained clustering problem. The main equation M, shown on the right, attempts to minimize the distance inside each cluster. This equation is subject to two constraints. The first of these constraints adds a penalty for each node not assigned to any cluster. While the second constraint adds a penalty for each cluster where the sum of the demand of the nodes assigned to it surpasses the vehicle capacity. For the routing phase, we also developed both a classical and a quantum algorithm. The classical algorithm is a combinatorial optimization algorithm this algorithm is modeled using Google's OR tools framework. Then we use guided local search to explore the solution space and return the best solution found. Guided local search is a heuristic algorithm built on top of a local search algorithm. It gradually adds penalties to certain features of the solutions to help the local search 
escape from local minima and plateaus. It performs an exhaustive search of the solution space and thus tends to find the global minima. The quantum algorithm is a cubo formulation of the Hamiltonian cycles problem with a fourth constraint added to minimize the distances inside each path. This is equivalent to solving the traveling salesman problem. The Hamiltonian cycles problem is modeled by the three constraints shown in the screen. These constraints ensure that one, every customer can appear only once in the cycle, that each position in the cycle is assigned to only one customer, and that every cycle starts at customer zero, which in our case indicates the depot. The constraint represented by HB is the one that attempts to minimize the total distance of the edges between the customers inside the cycle, thus transforming the Hamiltonian cycles problem into a traveling salesman problem. We have also developed a fully quantum algorithm which attempts to solve the CVRP problem as a whole instead of splitting it into different phases. The solution space that this algorithm needs to search is much, much larger than the one searched by each of the different parts of the hybrid algorithm. The main equation of this formulation is relatively simple. It, attempt, it attempts to minimize the distance traveled by each vehicle. However, it is subject to a multitude of constraints which are needed to ensure that the solutions obtained by the main equation respect the requirements and constraints of the aforementioned CVRP problem. Some of the constraints applied here are represented as inequalities. These require the addition of slack variables to be able to model them in a cubo form. These slack variables greatly increase the total number of binary variables needed to represent the CVRP problem which increases the size of the solution space and ultimately the difficulty of finding the global optima. Now that we have seen all of the implemented algorithms, we can proceed with analyzing their performance. From the experiments performed, we have observed that the Cuba clustering algorithm tends to perform better than the K-metoid algorithm when the data is not clearly clusterable. We measure the quality of the results by computing the silhouette scores of the clusters obtained by each algorithm. In the leftmost graph, we can observe that the silhouette score obtained by the cubo clustering algorithm is higher than the K-metoids algorithm, especially when the data shows a low degree of clusterability. This is represented by a high, higher value of the dip test p-value shown with a green line. When the data shows a high degree of clusterability, the results obtained by the cubo clustering algorithm are about the same quality as the ones obtained by the K-methods algorithm, though there are some specific cases where this assumption does not hold, such as with the CMT-07. In the center graph, we can also observe an advantage of the cubo clustering algorithm versus the K-methods algorithm, since it tends to obtain a smaller number of clusters with demand errors, though again, there are some cases where this assumption does not hold, but as a whole, we can see it tends to perform better. The rightmost graph shows the running time for both algorithms. Here, we can see that the running time for the cubo clustering algorithm is much higher than the running time for the K-methods algorithm. Though, this is not a totally fair comparison since the K-methods algorithm is a classical algorithm running on classical hardware for which it is optimized. While the cubo clustering algorithm is a quantum algorithm designed for quantum annealers, but it is being run on simulated annealers running on classical hardware, which adds a level of complexity that increases the running time of the quantum algorithm. We also attempted to run the cubo clustering and cubo routing algorithms on real quantum annealers, specifically D-Wave's Advantage System 6.1 through Amazon Brack but due to the size of the kubos generated by these algorithms and the difficulty of embedding the problems onto the topology of the available system, which is known as the minor embedding problem, the costs for running the experiments quickly spiraled out of control and we decided to cut it short and instead run the kubos algorithms on simulated annealers. From the experiments performed, we have observed 
that the distances obtained by the cube routing algorithm tend to be slightly higher than the ones obtained by the combinatorial optimization algorithm. This can be seen in the left graph, where the orange line represents the distance obtained by the cube algorithm, and the blue line, the distance obtained by the combinatorial optimization algorithm. Though the difference is not huge, and there are indeed some cases where both algorithms ex obtain extremely similar distances, on average, the combinatorial optimization algorithm tends to obtain better results than the Cuba routing algorithm. In this case, both algorithms perform an exhaustive search of the solution space. And though the combinatorial optimization obtained better results, with enough tuning of the hyperparameters used by the Cuba clustering algorithm, the results could be improved to be at the very least on par with the combinatorial optimization algorithm. But for these experiments, the hyperparameters were not tuned exhaustively. We performed the grid search over a very limited range of values for those hyperparameters. And yet, the Cuba routing algorithm performs only slightly worse than the combinatorial optimization, except in specific cases, such as with CMT10, where the results are much worse. Again, the running time of the Kubo routing algorithm is much higher than the running time for the combinatorial optimization algorithm. Though as mentioned previously, this comparison is not totally fair for the same reasons mentioned before. With the added complexity that the routing algorithms are running multiple instances in parallel. This reduces the computation time needed while increasing the resource usage but it is a worse improvement for the Cuba routing algorithm than for the combinatorial optimization algorithm. Since the simulated annealers on which the Cuba is run consume more memory than the combinatorial optimization algorithm. And thus this becomes a bottleneck when running enough instances in parallel. From the experiments performed, we have observed that the Cubo CVRP algorithm does not scale well at all with a number of customers and vehicles, but especially with a number of customers. The number of variables generated by the Cubo CVRP algorithm increases exponentially with a number of customers, quickly becoming unmanageable. Most of these variables come from the closed loop subtour elimination constraint. We can see in the top graph that the number of slack variables required by this constraint is much, much higher than the number of main decision variables and slack variables used by the capacity constraint. The number of these slack variables also grows exponentially with the number of customers at a very steep rate. The number of slack variables needed by the capacity constraint scale linearly with the number of vehicles in the problem. This is shown in the middle graph. The number of decision variables used by the main equation scale exponentially with both the number of customers and the number of vehicles, albeit at a much slower rate than the closed loop subtour slack variables. We can see this in the bottom graph. Yet, even when the number of variables in the Cubo equation is manageable, the results obtained by the Cubo CVRP algorithm are not very good, as evidentiated by the right bottom image. This is due to the difficulty of tuning all of the different constraints in the Cubo equation. And though the results could be improved by tuning the hyperparameters, the effort would not be worth it due to the scaling problem of the Cubo CVRP algorithm, which limits its usability to only toy problems. After analyzing the results obtained by the different algorithms, we conclude that the Kubo clustering algorithm performs better than the K-methods algorithm, especially on data with a low degree of clusterability, as is typically the case with real world data. And thus, it ultimately is a better option for the clustering phase of the hybrid algorithm. For the routing phase of the hybrid algorithm, the combinatorial optimization algorithm offers better results than the Kubo routing algorithm with the data sets tested though a bit more research is needed since a better tuning of the hyperparameters might improve the results obtained by the Kubo formulation. And due to the aforementioned scaling problem, the presented Kubo CVRP algorithm is not a viable alternative to the hybrid algorithm. The, the overall conclusion we got from 
this research is on the high potential for a business case in a scenario where technology has grown in maturity to overcome initial barriers, usually higher entry costs and long-term investments, a development of better algorithm, risk and management of competitive cost efficient alternatives. As we experienced during the research, the current hardware topology increases the complexity for the quantum alternative, turning our findings to be even more important since it is quite an achievement for this scale that the quantum approach provided better results under certain conditions in a competitive disadvantage. Even in the context of a more aggressive investment for an extended infrastructure and development of the services and R&D, we pushed our evaluations from time times the initial investment scenario, and it is still a positive investment outlook for a three years timeline. Our findings prove that future improvements in quantum computing technology supports the technical and economical feasibility of a future potential advantage. So we're done. Thank you so much, both of you, Luisa and Raul. Uh, well, thank you so much. Raul, sorry. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, is there any, are there any questions from them? It's an amazing job because I think it's the, the first uh, situation in which I see both a uh, business analysis of the impact that the, the algorithm and the solution would have and also a comparison between different quantum alternatives, apart from the classical ones, of course, uh, to assess whether there's an actual uh, improvement or, or benefit in the use of the solutions and which one of them is, is uh, most suitable. So in that sense, it was an amazing job and I, I really appreciate it, that one. I don't know if there are any questions from, from the audience on this. Hello. Uh, I have a question. So, so for your uh, operation, how can we calculate how many qubits do we need in implementation this operation in real quantum computer? Yeah, it's a Cubo algorithm. So we actually implement it on quantum annealers instead of real quantum hardware. However, we found out that it was, I think, for around 15 vehicles and around 100 customers. The cubos generated were tens of thousands of variables. And in the end, we needed to use what is QBSolve or what was called QBSolve to split that into smaller instances that actually fit onto the quantum annealers, which even though they say have around 6,000 qubits, I think in this case, it's 5,760 qubits these qubits are not fully interconnected. So mm -hmm. in the end, we ended up obtaining around 100 or 200 fully connected qubits with which we could represent the variables in our equations. So uh, so I have another open question. So so for like uh, to solve a large scale problem like Amazon logistics, do, 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 do as how many qubits you estimate if we can solve this pro a large scale problem? To solve large scale problems, like for example, what, what Amazon would use, I don't think the quantum annealers we have available right now would be up to the challenge since I think the best we could obtain was yeah around 6,000 qubits, which really are around 200. I think with better um, embedding, with a, a better embedding of the problem onto the topology, we could increase the number of available uh, qubits and, uh, so instead of like 200, we can maybe have three or 400, maybe even 500, but this scale is still way, way too small for what a problem like, for a problem like the ones Amazon would have, which I'm guessing in the ballpark, which be, would be around millions of variables. Mm. Okay. Thank you, thank you for your answer. Okay, anything else? I have, uh, well, I have a question about the graph. It's a little bit a silly question because uh, 
I couldn't really understand when you were like in some of the graphs you were showing, uh, I think the tests, you were naming them as a CMT 00, CMT 01. Yeah, so what is, could you explain a little bit that? Because for instance, uh, it's a little bit for me, if, if we just uh, focus on on the left uh, um, side of the graph. So it is a bit difficult for me to understand like why it is so big difference between uh, CMT05 and CMT06, for instance, on this, on this graph. Yeah, CMT in this case are the data sets that we used. So for example, uh, CMT01, I think it was five vehicles and around 20 clients, something like this. While CMT06 would be maybe 15 vehicles and 300 clients. Right now, I don't, I'm not sure those numbers are exact, but yeah, the differences are mostly due to the number of vehicles and clients in the data sets. Like they are open access data sets. If you want, you can take a look at yeah. them and see for but yourself. The, but yeah. but there is there is no any correlation, right? Between this, uh, I don't know, this CMT05 and this CMT06. So no, no. Between that, all right, okay. Because it was a little bit difficult for me to understand why in this graph, it was fluctuating so much the data. So, but but yeah, now 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 I kind of get it. So it, it's of course it depends on on the number of vehicles, uh, that uh, that for instance you have in you were using in each of these tests. Yeah, basically, I'm guessing you're right in terms of the results are reflecting the different scenarios that, that we tested. They are not linearly related to each other. It's, it's just like in, in, in our effort to, to make the most realistic evaluation possible, we, we get a, a, a certain data set and we started testing them based on our current uh, possibilities. And in this case, it's just like, accessing not, not only to the simulation, but the real uh, quantum available hardware. In this case, not, not the universal gate, but the annular approach. So, so that's it pretty much, as simple as that. Yeah, thanks all. You're welcome. Well, just, just in case that uh, for the sake of the time, many of you want to dig further into any questions, feel free to reach us. Uh, you, you can contact us by, by the by the people organizing the seminar. So, so at the same time, I also want to use the time to uh, provide my thanks and appreciation to all the organizers, and especially to the guiding professors for for this work and the support of the respective companies that help us to make this uh, research uh, a more realistic research. Thank you so much. Are there any other questions? In any case, as Raul was just mentioning, this will be available on, on YouTube. And you are, uh, of course, welcome to, to reach out at any time. And we can always forward your your questions or your requests to the, to the speaker. So if that's everything, I think, Thank you so much again, uh, Pan and Raul, for, for the experience and for agreeing to deliver a talk. It's been amazing. And yeah, thank you so much. I hope we can we can still uh, meet in future initiatives. Have a nice day. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. This is the last talk for the day. We will continue tomorrow. And yeah, see you there. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, everybody. Bye-bye.